pull that off. Who does that? Yeah, I gotta clean the fan. Dude, yeah. Who says what? You totally do. Um, okay, he's yeah. the cleanest fan. Uh oh. So, wait! Um, so, before we get to all this, we're we gonna get to standing waves. What we should talk about is how wave material, or how waves move through material. So, remember, we got two types of waves we got longitudinal and transverse. So, we got longitudinal, where the wave material moves with the wave energy, and we got transverse, where the wave moves, the wave material moves up and down. So, you tend to call this is a transverse wave. Transverse wave. And then a shock wave is a longitudinal wave. Well, for reasons that we should figure out, when you increase the density of a longitudinal wave, the wave material moves faster. The wave energy moves through the medium faster. Doesn't that mean because if it's denser, the molecules are closer together, transferring energy? Here? That's exactly it. Okay. So yeah, um, for those who couldn't hear the mumble up front, um, it's because the material, the molecules are closer together. So again, a longitudinal wave requires the material, to, the medium, to bounce into each other. And the closer the molecules are, the faster that wave energy can move through the material. Okay. So the speed of sound in air, which is not very dense, is only 340 meters per second. The speed of sound in water, which is considerably more dense, is over 1,000 meters per second. And the speed of sound in aluminum is, I believe, 5, 1,500 meters per second. It's a lot faster in high density materials. Wait, aluminum is? Is more dense than water, by a bit. Well, yeah, I'm just saying, anyway. like, I thought they'd use like, a denser metal than aluminum. I just, I'm just throwing them out. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I can't memorize the speed of sound in every material. I'm just throwing numbers out. Uh, but anyway, it's a lot higher. I think water is 1,200 to 1,300. It might even be higher than that. Um, but So that means if you see a way off, if you see a, a rail, um, a, on a railroad, if you see a railroad, um, there's a person. Yeah, if you see a locomotive coming towards you, you're going to feel it in the rails long before you hear it. Because oh, yeah. the same vibration that creates the rumble that we experience from the locomotive is also causing the ground to vibrate and those steel rails to vibrate. So you can feel it in the rails before you can hear it. It's like the old, uh, these old westerns these where the ears. cowboys would put their ear down to the rail like, okay, rail's coming, get ready. We're gonna hit the rail and steal the gold. Anyway, so they, they, could, they could feel it and like, okay, you can't, you can't hear it, but we can feel it in the rails. Um, because the same vibration that we create the rumble that we would perceive as sound also vibrates the ground and it travels through the rails faster. Make sense? All right, cool. Um, which is also why, uh, if, like sometimes you see YouTubes where there's an explosion way off, like, you know, a bunch of Marines are like, let's blow something up, and they blow something up. And uh, you hear the ba-boom long after you actually see the camera shake. Yeah. So you see the flash, because the speed of light is a lot faster than sound in, in every case. You see the flash, and then the camera shakes, and then you hear the explosion. Yeah. The camera shakes and the vibrations in the ground. Seen these? Well, that's your homework. If you haven't seen it, go watch a video of Marines blowing stuff up. <laughs> All right, so uh, it increases in longitudinal waves, but decreases with transverse waves. So light that can travel through glass, glass, uh, slows down when it goes through more dense materials. Why is that? Uh, it's like the wave part of light, like where it's scattered. You're getting there, yeah. Yeah, as the light goes through the material, what has to happen is the energy has to get swallowed up by one molecule, burped out, swallowed up by another molecule, burped out, swallowed up by another molecule, burped out. So basically the light goes, Wee! so it gets launched, bang, it goes, I'm cruising through a vacuum. Oh, great, a molecule. Through one next molecule, through the next molecule, through the next, and I'm going again. What so it, as it travels through the materials, it slows down because it has to go from molecule to molecule to molecule. Yeah. What about like when you focus it using glass to make it that stronger beam? That's optics, and we'll talk about that next unit. Okay. Yeah, so the next unit is going to be light and optics. But right now, we're just talking about how wave energy moves through materials. Okay. So again, for a longitudinal wave, speed increases with increasing density, 
For a transverse wave, speed decreases with increasing density. Now, wave energy carries, let me back up, wave energy, or waves carry energy, and as they strike a medium, a different medium, they come back reflected, inverted, or upright. How much energy gets reflected is a basically a function of the difference in density. For instance, when I'm talking to you, the density of the air here and the density of the air over here is pretty much the same. Can we agree that with that? So not a lot of energy gets reflected. Okay. However, however, the density of this clipboard, the density of this clipboard is very different than the density of the air behind it. So when I put the clipboard in front of my face, my voice gets louder for me because a lot of the wave energy is bouncing off the clipboard. Probably sounds a little different for you too. Okay? So that's basically what's going on. Wave energy is traveling from air, which has a very low density, to wood, which has a little bit higher density. The bigger the change in densities, the more energy gets reflected. Now the actual formulas, we're not going to worry about. We're not going to do the formulas, just need to know that change in density, bigger, some gets reflected, some gets reflected inverted, some gets upright. We'll talk about that. This is why, this is why it's so painful for some of us to go to the assemblies, because the shouts and the music just bounce all over the walls. There's a big difference in density between air and brick, the cinder block walls that make up the gymnasium. So sound goes bounce, 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 bounce. If we wanted to keep that from happening, we could line the walls with fabric or put fabric seats in there. Part of the reason churches are so quiet is the seats are padded and sometimes they have insulation in the ceiling to absorb sound energy. I was at a church in California and they hung from the, it was like basically a, uh, it was a, a multi-use space. So it wasn't designed to be a church, it was a multi-use space and they hung carpet from the ceiling to absorb lots of energy. So the, the space was, it wasn't clanging like a gymnasium. Make sense? Okay. Same thing happens when you go to a, a restaurant and they don't have these panels. You've gone to those restaurants like Chipotle and Cordoba like to do that, where like they don't actually put any insulation in the ceiling. Those restaurants are louder because there's no insulation in the ceiling. The, the sound's just bouncing all over the place. This is, I mean, the they put like a pillow up there. Somebody's in the toilet. You'll see, you'll see what we're talking about. Next time you go to a restaurant, look at the ceiling, you're like, oh, there's little pillows up there. Yeah. So it's for decoration. Yeah. So basically what we're getting at is the bigger the difference in density, the more energy gets reflected. And how it gets reflected depends upon whether you're going to a more dense medium or a less dense medium. If wave energy is going to a less dense medium, the wave energy that comes back will be upright. If it's going to a less dense medium, the wave energy that comes back is going to be upright. If the wave energy goes to a more dense medium, the wave energy that comes back is inverted. This is going to be really important when we talk about resonance and musical instruments. So when you go from low density to high density, if your density is going up, the wave energy that comes back is going to be inverted, like this the animation. If your wave energy is going to a less dense medium, the wave is upright. So if you like things that are written down, then here you go. So when waves change medium, media, go from one media to a medium to another medium, when they change media, energy gets reflected. How much gets reflected depends upon the difference in density. The bigger the difference, more energy gets reflected. And then whether the wave energy comes back upright or inverted depends on whether you're going to a more dense or a less dense medium. sound sources. Those two sound sources can vibrate the air. But they vibrate the air independently. 
but they might actually add up to create a sum that is bigger than, uh, than each individual wave. This phenomena is called superposition. Basically, weight adding wave energies up. Are we almost done? By the way, PowerPoint is on the Google Classroom. So if you're like, I don't know, it's on Google Classroom. As a PDF, so you can open it if you're on your phone. So. Okay, so let's move on. So, the principle of superposition is pretty simple. It says that when you have waves, the waves change the medium independently of each other, but as an observer, we notice the overall change in the medium. Okay, so little wave comes in this way, big wave comes in this way. The waves pass each other. They don't change each other. They, the waves move independently of each other, but as an observer, we notice the overall change in the medium. So we see the blue line as it goes up and over each other, but the, uh, the waves themselves are unaffected. Kind of like if you had a wave pulse on a rope, you sent a wave pulse and someone else sent a wave pulse, the waves are gonna overlap. The bigger wave pulse is gonna keep going this way, little wave pulse is gonna keep going this way. At the point where they overlap, it's gonna look like that, and then that, and then they'll become normal again. That's superposition. The waves do not interfere with each other, or do not change each other, but their overlapping creates an interference that we detect as an observer in the overall uh, change in the way, or overall change in the medium. So this is called uh, interference, and when you get wave energy that increases amplitude, we call it constructive interference, and when you get wave energy that decreases amplitude, we call it destructive interference. called interference. I realize you generally think interference is like getting in the way of and changing something. Like, pass interference. You changed my path. I couldn't catch the ball. Well, in physics, interference just means two things adding together. So constructive interference is when you have a positive amplitude and a positive amplitude. Destructive interference is when you have a positive amplitude and a negative amplitude. creates an opposing wave to cancel out some of the sound that's coming in. Let me show you what I mean. Okay. So assuming this is going to work. Crank up the Audi. Channel. 
right, can you hear those? Is it loud enough or do you need to yeah, I hear the boobs. Okay, so basically what we're doing right now is this a 440 hertz sound, pretty common, similar to what goes bong bong, what says you can go to class, you can go leave class. And so this is channel one. Okay. This is channel two. They're the same frequency. Put them together. Louder, right? What kind of what kind of what kind of interference is this? This is constructive interference. Now something interesting happens when I change the phase. How to do this? So intervalue. I'm going to flip one of the channels by exactly 180 degrees. Okay. Here's what. Here's channel one. Here's channel two. Sounds about the same, right? Look what happens when I ch play them both at the same time. Channel one. Channel two. Channel one and two. Yeah. That's wild. By adding more waves in the room, it sounds less loud. In fact, if I could get these speakers to perfectly overlap, the sound coming out would be almost nothing. And that's what we look for, that's what we try to do. We put the microphones on our, on our headphones, and then they try to, a little computer tries to make an inverse sound wave to line up with the sound going into your ears to cancel out the sound. Again. Put them back in phase. Zero degrees. Channel one. Channel two. Channel one and two. I'm going to put the right channel, put one channel two out of phase at 180 degrees. And here's channel one. Here's channel two. And here's channel one and two. Isn't that wild? Okay, I'm gonna use this for a second. Okay, so that's destructive interference. That's how uh, that's how sound active sound canceling headphones work. If your headphones don't have a battery, you don't have active sound canceling. You have something. You basically have something to muffle certain frequencies of sound, but it's not active sound canceling. Unless it's got a battery, because a, a microcomputer is required to make that happen. Okay. So you know, again, here's more ways. You don't need to write this down because you already did it. Um, so it doesn't matter What's your name? what direction. So, Scott, question? So how does, can you change the, so the inverse wave that you're sending to cancel out the wave so it makes it wider? Can you change what, like, so certain sounds won't get canceled out, other sounds will get canceled out? <laughs> yes. Because that's how, like, gut, like, um, the Bose 700s? Yeah, for like guns and stuff like that. Whenever you shoot, like I can hear you talk, but when I, as soon as I shoot the gun, they cancel out. So okay, so how those work? How how um, like firearm headphones work? Is they use a foam that is specifically designed to pick up the really high pitch explosion. Uh, uh, by practical, by 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 reference, in, in reference to that, um, human speech is actually pretty low. Most of us talk at very low frequencies. And not just guys, girls too. Um, practically speaking, human speech is very, very low. Um, so low sounds penetrate a lot of materials better. High sounds get stuck in materials a lot better. So that's why a subwoofer can be in your trunk, but the tweeters have to be in the door panels. Okay. Also, oh, speaking of cars, um, really expensive luxury cars, they also use this. They use the, the audio system in the car to cancel out some of the road noise. So you're like, man, this car is quiet. That's because the audio system has actually got microphones in the bumpers and in the, the firewalls to listen to the engine and then try to make sounds to cancel out some of the audio in the engine. Normally I just use like the squeaks in my engine. Yeah, normally I just crank up the bass, turn up the treble. I go bouncing down the road. I like a good, I like a good deep tissue massage while I'm driving along. Yeah, that's how it is. The hoopty doopty. So anyway, so with construction and destructive interference, it doesn't matter that the waves are moving in different speeds, which here they are, and it doesn't matter that the waves are moving in opposite directions, which here they are. Okay, so it doesn't matter. It's still interference. Okay.
Give me a thumbs up if you're with me so far. I'm so with you. Any more questions? <laughs> yeah. This is fun. Now, when you get constructive interference and the frequencies are the same, they can build up, as in the case of this. So, in fact, if I was to, I'm not going to do this, but if I was to take the 440 hertz speaker and the 440 hertz speaker and put your head right in between, like put your ear right here, there is a distance where I could make this exceptionally loud. Because what happens is the wave will go boo, bonk, hit the speaker, and you go boo, bonk, and hit the speaker. And if you get those waves in phase at the same frequency, that's when you create a standing wave. And that's what's going on in our, uh, in this guy. So what's happened here is, you know, what did you just do up. without a person if, said in between? If I was, uh, I was you, you would hear, the, the waves would, you wouldn't hear, you would hear it louder. But not in a So that's what's going on in our standing wave generators. Did everybody go home and, and take apart a, a dual shock and make a standing wave generator? Uh, I did not because I okay. have two controllers. Yeah, I, I don't have that many. Board. Fair enough. Uh, but uh, with that Xbox, you could probably get old Xbox. I think those are actually from. They're, I think they're from the PlayStation One dual shocks. Um, like the very the gray PlayStation yeah, that came out when you were born. Oh my gosh! Uh, I yeah. Uh, so what's going on here is the wave energy from the shaking is going up the string, bouncing off my finger and coming back down. And then another one's going up the string, bouncing, and it's going. It's basically amplifying the amplitude. It's going two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and it keeps going and going and going. Now some energy is lost to friction because it's basically pushing against the air. But uh, it keeps going, it just keeps vibrating and vibrating and vibrating and vibrating. I told you um, way back, I told you yesterday about the, uh, the, the Roman troops, how they would walk across the bridge and create resonance. That's what's going on here. It's mechanical resonance. The energy is basically being amplified and amplified and amplified and amplified. And with a wave, it creates a standing wave. All right, so let's take a look at this. Remember, we got nodes and antinodes. I'm going to open this up while I set up the Rubik's Cube. We got nodes and antinodes, and nodes and antinodes are areas of no energy and areas of maximum energy. I'm going to walk around the room while you write that down, and I make sure all the gas valves are closed off because sometimes people like to open up the gas valves because they want to know the whole room closed up. 